WCNC Charlotte. This is Flashpoint, where power and politics collide and the tough questions get asked and answered. Thanks for joining us here on Flashpoint. I'm Ben Thompson. Medicaid expansion in North Carolina could still be months away, delaying health insurance for more than half a million folks who are working but can't afford coverage. Things look promising back in March. After a decade of debate, a bipartisan group of state lawmakers finally passed the legislation. But here's the thing. They added a provision that said it could not take effect until a state budget was passed. Well, now, nearly five months later, we still don't have a budget and we still don't have Medicaid expansion. The House Speaker says he doesn't expect one before September, speaking about the budget, meaning we'll miss a key federal deadline for getting people health insurance and we'll miss out on millions of dollars from the federal government. Joining us now is Cody Kinsley. He's North Carolina's Secretary of Health and Human Services. Secretary, thanks for coming on Flashpoint. We appreciate it. Great to be here. All right, so your department looking to uh, sort of officially expand Medicaid by October 1st of this year. You've said that you, you need a month to get ready for that, putting us at September 1st, which is now just a, a few weeks away. Uh, have you spoken to lawmakers? And, and, and if so, uh, what are they telling you about this timeline? You know, we were transparent with lawmakers about our efforts to really get expansion going live in North Carolina as soon as possible, uh, which is why we announced October 1 and made clear that we need authority no later than September 1st. You know, I, I think it's sad to hear that lawmakers are struggling to get the budget done. I think it's a real shame uh, that uh, lawmakers are willing to forego hundreds of millions of dollars of federal resources coming in North Carolina, uh, and it's tragic. Uh, that we're willing to run it up to the line here and risk hundreds of thousands of people of losing access to care um, and not getting access to care. Uh, and so my hope is that the General Assembly will continue to work hard, uh, will give the department the authority that it needs to move forward uh, because we have got to get Medicaid expanded as soon as possible. Uh, it's a real big deal to a lot of people. And it's been more than a decade in the making, uh, we should put point out this has been a long time coming. Um, I know one option has been if this doesn't look like it's going to happen in the next few weeks would be the idea of decoupling um, Medicaid expansion actually from the budget. I any indication that that's a real possibility? You know, Medicaid expansion stands on its own feed. It doesn't require any additional state funding uh, to operate, uh, uh, which is what's great about it. It draws hundreds of millions of dollars in health care uh, payments into North Carolina um, all by itself. Uh, so there's no reason why we are waiting since March 27th when this bipartisan legislation was signed to today. Uh, and again, October 1, we'll have 300,000 in North Carolinians uh, uh, on coverage, if we can go live, uh, that will increase up to 600,000 people. And now, because of the end of the public health emergency and the Medicaid unwinding, about 9,000 people are currently on Medicaid, are losing their coverage. They would have been able to stay on if expansion were in place. And so this slippage of uh, the budget and not getting authority is having a real impact on folks. But, but I mean, honestly speaking, I mean, ha have you gotten anywhere with the idea of separating this? I mean, because because I know in, in the past, Republicans have not seemed on board with that. But ha have you gotten any indication that that's a possibility at least? You know, I, I have been working closely with the General Assembly. Uh, I know that they are passionate about trying to make a difference for folks. Uh, I know they're very focused on getting the budget done. Uh, my hope is that uh, now that they've continued to slide on the budget, that they'll consider decoupling more seriously, uh, recognizing the impacts. But, but look, there are other real important things in the budget, too, that'll make a difference in people's lives that they also need to get done. You know, I'm particularly concerned about rural health in North Carolina. We know that folks in rural communities are three to four times as likely to be uninsured. We've seen nearly a dozen rural hospitals close over the last decade in North Carolina, in part because we didn't have Medicaid expansion. We know that rural communities are struggling with opioids and with healthcare workforce issues, much of what was in the budget from a healthcare perspective would have a real and positive impact on those communities. So, you know, I'd say let's get to work. Let's get authority for expansion clear so we can move forward here and let's get this budget done uh, and invest in North Carolina. Uh, folks need it. You touched on it, but okay, say we missed the October 1st deadline, then explain what we miss out on at that point and what it means for your timeline moving forward. 
So uh, if we miss the September 1 authority uh, moment, uh, is likely, depending on how far we slide, um, that we may need to go live December 1, but it could be well into 2024. Uh, and that has a real impact on people. So right now, about 9,000 people are losing their coverage each month who would have been able to stay on had expansion been in place already. Uh, also, we have about 300,000 people that are in a lesser benefit uh, in Medicaid who we will be able to automatically move into a full benefit on the date we go live. So those are folks that um, whether you've lost coverage or you don't get coverage, that means you can't see the doctor. You can't get your blood pressure medications covered. You can't get your uh, insulin covered, uh, your chronic diseases under control. These people um, need that care. It's important to them. It's important to their families. It's also particularly important to our small businesses in rural communities. Think about the small businesses that make our rural towns in North Carolina so vibrant and exciting where many of us live and love to travel and visit. Uh, these small business owners, can't afford health insurance for their employees. 80% of people who will benefit from expansion are in working families. Uh, this is a huge investment in rural communities and in working families. While I have you, uh, I wanna ask you about COVID as kids go back to the classroom uh, this fall. Uh, how is your office treating this? Is it now treating it like it would any other common you know, issue out there like the flu or anything like, like that? Or are you still treating this as a different sort of game? You know, COVID is a disease that is here with us and will continue to have case numbers rise and fall, much like RSV and flu and other respiratory illnesses. Uh, we are seeing a period of time right now where viral transmission is increasing over the last several weeks, um, much like we have had other summer surges. Uh, first and foremost, our most powerful tool to prevent uh, illness is vaccination. Uh, and so folks should be up to date on their vaccines, uh, have tests available to you at home rapid tests um, are a quick way for you to know if your sniffles are COVID or something else. So you can keep yourself away from others, keep yourself healthy. Uh, and also I want folks to know that treatment uh, is widely available now. Uh, and so ask your healthcare provider um, about whether treatment is right for you. Uh, we suspect that we'll have from the CDC approvals on a uh, updated booster uh, later in September that that is tailored to the most recent variants for COVID-19. Uh, and that's going to be much like you get an annual flu shot, uh, an important investment in your health uh, at that time. So uh, we'll, we'll continue to see these uh, variants rise and fall. Uh, finally, this week, the FDA changing guidelines to allow men who have sex with other men to donate blood. This has been a controversial uh, topic now for, for, for decades. A lot of gay men not able to donate blood. As a gay man yourself, this is something personal for you. And, and this week, you actually went ahead and you gave blood. Explain to us why this doesn't make just smart sense, but it also is helping out uh, a lot of these organizations that have struggled with, with blood donations over the years. You know, uh, this change in policy uh, is a long time coming, and I'm happy. I take a lot of pride in having played uh, a small part in getting the policy to be changed and then uh, a small part in rolling up my own sleeve and donating blood. Uh, it's a win, win, win. It's a win because um, this behavior-based risk assessment as opposed to identity-based risk assessment uh, is a smarter way for us to protect uh, the blood supply. Uh, it also is a win because it allows us to have a more robust blood supply. More donors like myself uh, can come forward, roll up their sleeve, and give blood because there's no substitute for blood. Uh, people that have chronic diseases or people that are in tragic accidents, they need blood and there is no replacement to save their lives. Uh, and then it's a win also because it invites more folks to the table of charity and contribution uh, and the ability to give back. So um, I'm glad that we have done this. And I, I want to invite everyone uh, to reconsider your eligibility, uh, roll up your sleeve. You can give blood uh, every eight weeks. Uh, join me in saving a life. All right. Secretary of Health and Human Services for the state of North Carolina, Cody Kensley. Secretary, thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. Great to be here. Take care. All right. Take care. More Flashpoint after this.